Carolina Panthers, Frank Reich, head coach, Bryce Young, first overall pick, Mother's Day weekend, rookie minicamp. Here is Frank Reich on the practice reps taken by Bryce Young in his first set of NFL practices. Yeah, Bryce will get a lot of reps, you know, as, as we've said, you know, hey, when, when he's ready, when it's best for the team, you know, that, that's, you know, when we'll look to make a transition. But right now, you know, when we come back out Monday, Andy will be taking reps with the one ones. Bryce will be with the twos. And, um, but Bryce is going to get a lot of reps, you know, we'll, you know, likely even get a few more than, than Andy, you know, just as, as, the, as the new guy. So, and Andy, the good thing with Andy is he's logged a lot in in the last couple of weeks and, and with, as a savvy veteran, um, you know, he still needs to work, but uh, we'll focus on getting Bryce uh, as the younger player, you know, focus on getting him as many reps as we can. That tells me he's starting week one. That I mean, tells me that's he's starting what they week want. One. That's if they're they giving him more first team reps than Andy Dalton, because Andy Dalton's new there. I don't care how long he's been in the NFL. Sure. He's new there. Right. The guy that's getting the bulk of the first team reps is the guy that's starting week one. And as time goes by, it's going to be a little more and a little more. They're trying to avoid, and we've talked about this before. It's a point you've made. You don't want to create the impression that anything's being handed to sure, right. the young guy. Yeah. He's got to earn it. And they're confident he's going to earn it quickly. Yeah. That's why they took him. It gets back to that debate. If you're going to take the guy with the first overall pick, you better be damn sure you're going to get him ready to go. Right. And if you don't think you're going to be able to get him ready to go, take somebody else with the first overall pick. That's one of the factors they're looking for. Who can we get ready to go week one? And I think that's part of why they decided to draft Bryce Young. Agreed. They're right. confident they can get him ready right. to go week one, and they're already beginning the process of doing it. Right? I mean, that's all we heard through the process was he was he is ready to go, right? He's an NFL. He thinks like an NFL quarterback, right? He processes like an NFL quarterback. You know, he's had, you know, uh, parts of, of playbooks and things he's done on college that are, you know, of course, NFL advanced type stuff that he's doing. So I think that is a part of the appeal, uh, appeal of why he was so highly regarded, you know, uh, across the league in that capacity. And, and yeah, they're, you know, number one pick, uh, I look at it to go, it's just, yes, it's a matter of time. It's more of a, you know, how much progress can he make or when does Andy Dalton not do his best just to open the door for Frank Reich and company to go, you know what, let's start giving him half the first team reps. But yes, Andy Dalton, they're going to play it as, hey, he's been here. He's had a lot of reps. He's he knows what he's doing, which is very true. And you get to a quarterback that age, even when, you know, Mike, even even when they're they're not, you know, preparing a number one pick. Sometimes those guys get lesser reps, right? They've been around the league. They The team tries to save their arm a little bit and just keep them fresh and let some of the other guys get reps. But I would think that, yes, he's going to get some with the ones, mainly the twos, but he'll get some with the threes. And then you'll have days where, hey, oh, hey, Andy, you were supposed to get 10 plays this period, but – Hey, we're, we're, we're going to give you seven. Bryce is going to take the last three, right? And he's going to start to infiltrate everybody's reps to where he's going to slowly but surely start dominating practice. Yeah, and it is just a matter of time. It is. Before he's the guy. The moment I heard Reich say that, that he's going to get a few more reps than Andy Dalton. That's it. Game over. Andy Dalton's number two. Bryce Young's number one barring injury or a complete and total disaster, yeah, which they right. will work their damnedest to avoid happening. There like it is. Video of Bryce Young taking his first snap. You can actually see him over the offensive lineman. That's a plus. <laughs> You're funny. And, well, he does look, look really small. It's hard not to think that when he pulls Especially away from the under center. Especially on the center. Right. Because what are we used to seeing with small quarterbacks? Shotgun. Yeah. Not right. up there where he is literally under center. I mean, you can say a quarterback is under center with Bryce Young. When he's under center, he is under the center. Yes. But not quite. Yeah. Still saw no. his helmet, which is good. It just reminds me of watching high school football. Yeah. When you know, because when you watch a high school game, sometimes the quarterback looks so small behind yeah. the offensive right. line. It's right. kind of like what it is there. But oh, that, I'm I'm ready sure. to go. Yeah. They they know, they believe, they think he's smart enough to do yes. what needs to be done. Right. And uh, we'll see what happens. I yeah. can't remember who they play week one, but right. it becomes interesting right out of the gates. Well, I don't know. We didn't pay much attention to the schedules of the teams that aren't getting a bunch of primetime games. Chris is looking at uh, Atlanta. We're at Atlanta. Just All right, so there we know. go. Bijan yeah, Robinson job. versus yeah. Bryce Young right That's now. That's pretty good. Little Desmond Ritter. Right. See what you can do. Wide open division. NFC South. See what happens. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna try to do their best to get him out on the field, like you said. Definitely. Why? It's a young football team. Their expectations are not real high, as we've talked about. You know, they do have some young talent. 
So I'm excited to see what they do with Bryce Young and what the offense looks like. You know, it, it, he's he's got some special things about his ability and the way he plays the position. He's a natural, you know. But I guarantee just them watching him come on the field yesterday or the other day. I, I guarantee there was a few of them were like, man, I can't believe that that's our number one pick, that guy right there who's 195 pounds. He's leading. Like, there, there's got to be that moment. But he's shown that he knows how to play and protect himself, and uh, we'll see what he does with this opportunity. Do you think that puts more pressure on the Texans to play C.J. Stroud right out of the gate? It's not that they have a ton of great alternatives. I know there's still this argument that Davis Mills yeah, is right. good enough. Well, right. if he was, they wouldn't have drafted C.J. Stroud. Right. But do you think it puts pressure on the Texans and the Colts who took Anthony Richardson at number four if it's so clear and it's so obvious right now that Bryce Young is going to play week one I, I think that you got to be careful about you know judging off of other situations I, I would always say that can lead you into you know bad bad things or bad situations where you go wait well let's let's put our guy at number one you know he might not be ready yet but they're making his one so let's us do it I think everybody's got their own process there. I don't know if they'll feel that pressure. Everybody in all three of those organizations knows where it's heading, right? I mean, everybody's going to put all their focus into making those three guys the starter by week one. It's just you got to be careful, and everybody kind of handles the new plays and the adjustment a little bit differently. I delved into this issue with Jets GM Joe Douglas last week yeah. on Zach Wilson. Right. Second overall pick in 2021. Yeah. And – Joe Douglas acknowledged some regret that they didn't have I saw a you veteran write that. presence. Right. That maybe like a Joe Flacco. Yeah, they should have. Have somebody ready to go if there's any doubt whatsoever. They went all in with the youth movement. They never bothered to stop and think, is this kid ready? Right. And I, I look at it this way. If you're going to use that pick that high on a quarterback, you create an expectation that he's going to play in today's NFL. Yeah, you do there's no longer the Carson Palmer first overall pick sit behind John Kitney. It just doesn't work that way. There's a presumption. If you're going to use the pick on that guy that early, he's going to play. And if not him, then pick somebody else who's going to be ready to play. Yeah. But you have to be willing to take a step back if you see anything that makes you think the kid's not ready. You have to still be monitoring because you make it worse if you go forward when he's not ready. Yeah. So you need to have an alternative. Right. They didn't have an alternative. No. It was him. No alternative. Right. No alternative, let alone nobody to show him what to do. Yeah. Right? No guy to be like, hey, it's okay. I I I played a, you know, shitty two games in a row in my life before too. You know what I did to get better? What I, he had nobody there to kind of show him the way even as my I can speak to myself as a young kid it, you know I wasn't even playing or the number one pick like that but uh, I know I've told you before the benefits I got to watch Brad Johnson and how he handled himself right or Brian Greasy and Jason Garrett was there I learned little things about how they approached the game that I was like whoa wait I'm going to infuse that into my routine oh oh oh, oh wait he gets here before the special teams meeting and watches me, you know, film in this room here. Okay, I'm going to start doing that when I become the guy. I mean, so he had nothing like that, let alone, yeah, now you're swimming and not mentally. And then physically you start to be all over the places, which happened like we talked about with the sidearm and stepping everywhere and doing all that crap to where he had nobody to kind of calm him down and set him back straight. And that's why I still have hope for the guy. Well, and through it all, you've got Matt Corral, who was third-round pick of the Panthers it's crazy, last right? year. I can't help but wonder yeah. whether or not they're just going to keep an eye on the phone. Is there somebody else out there that really liked him last year? Yeah. Other than Scott Fitter, or the GM of the team, that's the only common link. But you have a brand-new coaching staff. If he's just kind of lost in the cracks here, maybe they can get value for him and he can get an opportunity somewhere else because what, what chance is he ever going to get None. in Carolina? None. Once Bryce Young is the guy, that's it. Right. Unless – Next year, he's the number two. Right. He has a similar skill set. That's where I would say it does make sense that way. Right? But you're right. They're in a little weird spot here. And, and then he's coming off Liz Frank injury. And Right. And, uh, I mean, they really liked him. They liked him enough last year to make him a third-round pick. Yeah. And he was a guy that you had rated pretty highly. You I had him my number one guy. So, you know. I mean, we talked to two guys at the Combine, and they said the best player they played against in college football was Matt Corral. He's got – they tried to trade him before the draft. They tried to trade him because you know me, what I think when I hear that stuff. He's got a laser. He's quick as hell. The people are they're gonna go, wait, this is our number one pick. His arm isn't as good as the guy we picked to the third round last year. Here, here's our number one pick. He's got a quick release. 
but it's not as quick as the guy we picked in the third round last year. That was the argument you made last year with the Panthers possibly taking Kenny Pickett. Exactly. Sam Darnold's there. And you're going to go. They see Sam Darnold slinging. They're like, why? Why do we take worry? Kenny Pickett? Yeah. Right. I would worry about that. Corral has, a, you know, we'll see what he is as a player. I didn't like the way he looked in preseason last year either. But either way, his physical ability is real. Like, we, I've heard it from enough people. And, yeah, yeah, he's kind of stuck in no man's land. I'm interested to see what happens there, too. And that's the thing. We focus so much on the guys that we know are going to play, but there are so many other guys out there who get just kind of lost yeah. in the shuffle. Just and doesn't there work he is, out the guy right that way. we talked so much about leading up to the 2022 draft who right. is now just in limbo. Yeah. And you wonder what's going on behind the scenes, his representation, and this is another reason why it's important to have an agent because it's difficult and it's awkward for him to go in to the coaching and be office, like, where do I stand? What am GM I doing? And say, hey, you know, what, the, go? what the right, hell? Right, what the hell? Right, What's going on here? Right. It, it, an agent takes up that that cause for Definitely. you and tries to break the logjam. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.